Now if we consider the acceleration of a skier that is going downhill and we look at his velocity vector at points and let's say he starts from rest and we look at his velocity vector later it's going to be um, it's going to increase and the acceleration must be in that direction of motion it's going to be even longer at point C because he is continuing to accelerate in that direction due to gravity and then at point D it's going to change direction a little bit and it is going to be a little bit longer he is still going downhill and then point E it might look like that and then point F oops, let's go back to that guy it might look like that and it's going to be a little bit shorter because he's now going uphill I mean that's kind of what your intuition says right so if we consider his acceleration at these points his acceleration is going to be down at A or downhill at A, downhill at B um, the same at C and then if this right here is the normal to the curve at point D he's still accelerating and so the acceleration is um, upward but with a little tiny component still in the downhill direction um, at point E the velocity doesn't change at least not the length but it does in the direction um, and so the acceleration is going to be normal to the direction of the velocity and then the hill is still turning him at point F and now it's starting to slow him down a little bit because he's going uphill so the acceleration vector is just a little bit to the left of the normal curve now, projectile motion if you take any body and you give it an initial velocity, then its path is actually going to follow a parabola. It's going to look like that. That's going to be the trajectory. And if you ignore the effects of air resistance, then the only thing that acts on this um, ball in motion, say, is going to be the effect of gravity. Um, now we're neglecting air resistance, we're also neglecting the fact that the earth, the earth is curved a little bit and the earth is rotating a little bit. Um, if you ever take a higher level mechanics class then you'll get to see some really cool stuff with that. However it's just a little bit too complicated to talk about in this class and it makes the math uh, pretty nasty. So we're not going to talk about it here, we're just going to talk about it qualitatively but not quantitatively. So what's going to happen is we're going to give this um, ball initial velocity and now for a projectile we can treat this as much the same way where if we um, fire a ball up with some initial velocity then we can break it up into its x components and y components and treat them separately knowing that the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero as it was in the last slide and the acceleration in the y direction is going to be um, downward um, at 9.8 meters per second squared downward implied by the negative sign here so the first thing you do when you're solving a projectile problem is you say well I'm going to break my uh, velocity vector up into an x component and into a y component and now we have a triangle right here and we can use what we know about sines and cosines and triangles to um, to solve for v naught x and v naught v not y in terms of um, the angle and if you remember your you know trig days um, so, ka toa, where the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite divided by the, uh, divided by the, by the um, hypotenuse. So there's the opposite, there's the hypotenuse, and this one's the adjacent guy. So we can actually write v naught x is equal to v times the cosine of the angle alpha 
and we can write v naught y is equal to v sine times the angle. Now, if we set x naught and y naught equal to zero, then we can go ahead and we can write these equations. Um, first, let me point out though, because there is no acceleration in the x direction, that the x velocity is not going to change. It's always going to be the same magnitude, and it's always in the x direction. However, in the y direction, there's a there's an acceleration, and so the y velocity is going to it's initially upwards, and it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. At the very tippy top, it's not moving upwards anymore. So we would say that the velocity in the y direction at point two is actually equal to zero. Very important if you're solving for height or time at this point and then the ball acts like a falling ball and it increases in velocity and would also increase in velocity here. So knowing that x naught is equal to zero, then we also know that the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero, then we can simply write the x position as v naught x multiplied by time. Now, we know that there is also no acceleration in the x direction, so the velocity of the x is simply v naught x, and that is totally independent of time. Now, in the um, y direction, we use these same two equations, but anywhere you see an x, simply replace it by a y. So we would write y is equal to y naught plus v naught y multiplied by time and I'm just going to go ahead and say minus one half g t squared where I've simply put in negative g into the acceleration and we can replace that guy, we can set that guy equal to zero so we would say that the y position is v naught y multiplied by time minus one half g t squared and then we would also say v y is equal to v naught y um, minus g t and so that guy we simply write right here and if you ask yourself well what is v naught x and what is v naught y we've already solved for those guys right there. So we can plug those guys into the v naughts. Now just a, I mentioned we would talk very briefly about um, the qualitative aspects of um, air resistance. Um, air resistance is very complicated. It can depend on the velocity and it can depend on the velocity squared depending on what, um, what type of object and what type of atmosphere you're talking about. Um, it will always be in the opposite direction of a velocity. And so if you think about it, when a ball is initially traveling at that velocity, air resistance is going to be in the opposite direction. And what that means is if you consider a ball that's been thrown without air resistance in the magenta line, um, it's going to go to, say, I don't know, 240 meters or so. Now, if you encounter air resistance, first thing's going to happen is because of this right here, the ball is going to start slowing down, and it's not going to go as high if we consider air resistance. And because it's also acting not just in the y direction, but this air resistance is also acting in the x direction, it's not going to go as far. There's some component of that in that direction. So it might only go, say, 125 meters. Um, you know, difference of almost uh, of, um, over 100 meters or 300 feet based on some, you know, typical um, values you'd, you'd see for a baseball. If you uh, 
look at example 3.6 in your book, you consider a case where a, where a motorcycle is going to leave a cliff going horizontally. So here's the cliff right here. And we would call that point zero. So we would say initial x position and y positions were equal to zero. Um, the book asks, well, what can we say about the velocity in the x direction, velocity in the y direction, and the position in both of these two directions? Now, we know initially that v naught x is equal to v naught, and v naught y is equal to zero. So we can, when we also know that the acceleration downward is equal to negative g, and we know that the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero, so we can go ahead and we can write the velocity of the x at any given point, or at, um, at this point right here, we could write our x velocity as um, v naught. Again, no time dependence because there is no acceleration in that direction. And at that point right here, we can write the y velocity to be um, negative acceleration times time. So just make sure you take a quick look at this example and can understand what's going on with it in the book. Now 3.7, I'm going to work some of this for you. It's um, the classic projectile pro um, problem that I talked about last time. I'm not going to work all of it for you. Um, I want you to be able to solve some of this on your own and then check your answers with the book. So looking at this problem, we have a bat a baseball that has been um, hit upwards with a velocity of 37 meters per second at an angle of 53.1. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to draw my triangle and break up the initial velocity into v naught x and v naught y. And now I can treat these two velocities um, to be totally and completely independent. We also know that the acceleration downward is going to be, acceleration in the y direction is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we know that the acceleration in the x, dire x direction is equal to zero. So let's just solve the first part right here. What is the x position and y position after two seconds? And we know x naught and y naught are also zero right here. So we would simply say that our x position is equal to x naught plus v naught x multiplied by time plus one half acceleration in the x direction multiplied by time. We know that guy is equal to zero. And we need to know, we also know x naught is equal to zero. So what we need to know is we need to know v naught x. Now we talked about how to do that on the, um, on the slide with the, um, with the projectile motion. We said we can write v naught x to be equal to the velocity times the cosine of the angle in between them. So that's going to be 37 cosine 53.1 and that's going to come out to be 22.2 meters per second. Um, similarly, let's, let's just go ahead and write uh, v naught y is equal to v times sine theta and so that's going to be 37 meters per second multiplied by um, sine of 53.1 and we go ahead and we calculate that guy out to be 29.6 meters per second. Um, just a sanity check to, to make sure we did everything right. Both of these two guys are less than 37. Um, there's no way we could have a component larger than 37. 
And so now we can say that the position is equal to v naught x 22.2. And we're talking about two seconds. So meters per second multiplied by seconds. We're talking about 44.4 meters. That's the x position at two seconds. The Let's go ahead and write this up here. The y position is equal to the y naught plus v naught y multiplied by time plus one half the acceleration in the y direction multiplied by time. We know that guy is equal to zero. And we know v naught y, that's going to be 29.6 meters per second. The time is going to be two seconds plus one half negative 9.8 meters per second squared make that sure that guy's squared and then that's going to be two quantity squared and we go ahead and make sure you make sure you uh, you know pull that minus sign out and you subtract this um, second quantity here you go ahead and you pack that into your calculator and you're going to get 39.6 meters. Let me make sure I write seconds over there. So that's the y position at 2 seconds. Um, now I'm going to let you solve the rest of this problem. And, um, you know, but uh, one thing that is key to solving this height and this time is the y velocity here is equal to 0. So you're all, you'll have to uh, rearrange one of the equations such that you can solve for the time when the y velocity is equal to zero. And you can check your answer as following 3.7.